Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone on Facebook. Hello, everyone on YouTube. Thank you for joining me again uh, live. I'm streaming on YouTube and Facebook for our Thursday Tea Time Live. This is number five. We've been going over a month. Um, so anyway, yes, yeah, so I'm YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So hence my gaze will switch between the two uh, streams. Um, if you can hear me, please um, I don't know, put a thumbs up in the chat or something like that so that I know you can hear me okay. Um, and also, yeah, let me know where you're uh, watching from, where you are in the world. I'm quite interested to see. And if you are somewhere else, what time it is there. I'm trying to gauge what, what's a good time to do these uh, these live chats. Um, and uh, I, so I might switch it around depending on, on whether this is a good time for people. So hi, welcome, everybody. Welcome to Thursday Tea Time Live got quite a bit of stuff to talk to you about this week. It's been another busy week again. I hope you're having a good week. Uh, we're nearly at the end, nearly back to the weekend, whether that's any different for you at the moment or not, I suppose is a different matter. Um, but I've got quite a few um, things to tell you about this week, quite a few um, new bits and bobs that are happening. I've got some, believe it or not, I have some more book recommendations. I'm making myself sound extremely well read with these book recommendations, but um, once I show you them, you'll understand how I'm managing to get through them all. Um, and actually, it's because I have this awful habit, which I know a lot of you do too, of reading a lot of books concurrently. So there you go. Um, and before I get started, um, Oh yes, I've got the, um, the 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 announcement that I couldn't tell you about last week that I can now tell you about. So I'll come back to that um, a bit later on. But first of all, I want to um, give a shout out to Terry, who's my latest member on Patreon. He's joined in the week. So um, welcome to him, to the British History Club. Um, and also um, all of the um, all of you who are in there. Hi, Gary. Hi, Angela. Uh, all of you who are um, in the Patreon Club already, Four o'clock in the afternoon. Ah, you're only an hour ahead. Okay. It will change, won't it, once we get the uh, hour, hour change. Joanne, hi. Welcome from Oklahoma. I've noticed that the hour changes happen at different times in different countries, don't they? I knew there was a little bit of a discrepancy, but I know parts of America have already changed. Uh, uh, hi, Phil. I'm not actually sure when we change. I probably should look that up. It's not going to make a lot of difference at the moment other than, I suppose, well, you wake up and your phones have all changed and everything's just changed by itself, hasn't it? Hi, Karen, watching on YouTube. Hi, Jane. Hi, Phil, watching on Facebook. Um, so, yeah, for you who've just joined us, so Thursday Tea Time Live, our fifth one. Um, and I have got quite a bit to talk to you about. So I love doing these lives because it's a good chance to 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 tell you about stuff that's going on. I've got more books, I was saying earlier, to recommend. Uh, recommend which makes me feel um or makes me sound very well read <laughs> oh, yeah I don't know um and the announcement I was going to tell you about that I wanted to tell you about last week and I couldn't I can tell you more about this week hi Jane um and and yeah first of all I was saying any of you who are already in my British History Club on Patreon today the interview with Gareth Russell about the Titanic has gone live. It's an hour long. It's absolutely amazing. What I quizzed him about was what happened after the Titanic uh, sank. So obviously we're really well versed, or we think we are. That was one of the things that came out with the Titanic story and the, the, the sinking. And I wanted to know how come when the Titanic was nowhere near the only um, maritime disaster like that, you know, with such a huge loss of life, how come it's the Titanic that we've all heard about when we haven't necessarily heard about the other um, tragedies? And we went into that and we went into so where some of the, um, so, so how it's become kind of legend and what happened um, or how some of the myths that were created around it. How hi, Kathy. Um, how the myths around Titanic have been have been created, where they came from. Gareth's done amazing work at get actually and you know uncovering where some of these myths um 
for instance, the uh, the idea that third class passengers were gated off and the and the, you know the gates were locked and they couldn't get up. Total total nonsense. Anyway, so he talks a lot about that and also what happened to the survivors from the moment they were in the lifeboats to when they were on the ship that um, that picked up the survivors was called the Carpathia. So what happened on the Carpathia when they docked in New York, what happened then? And then, you know, some, some stuff, quite a bit of stuff after that as well. So um, it was a really fascinating talk. So um, like I said, the, the, that's an hour long, uh, an hour long interview I did with Gareth, but I tell you what, you watch it and it, it the time flies by. Welcome, Nick. And, um, but if you, even if you're not in my Patreon, if you go to my YouTube channel, there's um, about four minutes where I've sort of taken some bits out and put them all together so you can watch that. Um, any of you were, who were here last week and we were talking about Neil Oliver's amazing accent, well, Gareth is Irish and he has a fantastic accent as well. You know, another person who you could just listen, he could talk about anything. But he's also extremely uh, knowledgeable. So like I say, some myth-busting in there. Um, and, oh, and the other thing that I don't think I've mentioned, so exclusive is I'm going to be doing a Titanic tour with Gareth next year, May 2022. So if any of you are, you know, big into into the Titanic, um, I will be sharing details about that. Um, but I can't really talk about book recommendations and the Titanic and Gareth without telling you about, um, see, this is why I interviewed him. This is his book, um, Ship of Dreams. The Ship of Dreams, The Sinking of the Titanic and the End of the Edwardian Era. He's never won for short book titles. <laughs> and look at all the notes I've got. Um, it, it, it's a really good book. And I, I actually listened to it on Audible first and then bought the book. You know it's a good book if you do that, don't you? Um, so that actually, that one, there you go. There, well, let's get on to book, book recommendations. This can be the first, this is the first one. Def, I just, I can't recommend this more anymore really because it's not just about the titanic you know he says here the end of the edwardian era you learn huge amounts about anglo-american relationships at the time um what was going on in europe at the time he goes uh, through effortlessly by the way absolutely effortlessly um the kind of what was going on in ireland at the time of the titanic um being built um you've I mean, you hear about the people who got on at Southampton, um, but got off. Ah, where did it dock in France? It docked somewhere in France. Or was it? Yeah. Anyway, you hear about basically the people who managed to. Um, Karen, it's on my waiting list. Yes, Karen, you would love it. Um, I think we've spoken about it already, actually, haven't we, before, uh, if we did one. Um but yes, sorry about the people who 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 basically survived through um, accident almost. They should have been on the ship and they weren't. Oh, honestly, just get it. You you won't regret it. The next one. Does anybody have coffee table books anymore? You know the ones you know it's on you somewhere in your house where visitors can see. You know when we used to be able to have visitors, and uh, and they could um, you could just impress them without saying anything anyway here's one for you it's called letters of note and I was bought this as a Christmas present by a friend years ago and occasionally I just start flicking through it and um you know letters of note correspondence deserving of a wider audience and there's two um letters of totally different eras that I want to show you the first one is from our current queen and it was to President Eisenhower. Now, guess what the Queen wrote to President Eisenhower about? I don't know if any of you know this already. It's dated 24th of January, 1960. And it is, in fact, some of you might want this. It is the recipe for drop scones. Or scones depending on where you come from and she's written in uh so so she writes it in handwritten but four so four little sheets of i presume these were little because there's not a lot of writing on there and then 
a typed up it would have been in 1960 recipe for drop scones from that from our queen and if you want to know the recipe let me know maybe i'll then um, oh, i don't know if i can take a photo and and um and share it without annoying some kind of social media bods but um anyway i thought you might like that one the second one totally different era this is uh, a facsimile of the letter that mary queen of scots wrote to her brother-in-law um henry the henry the third of france yes henry the third of france the night before she was executed um and it's it's in it's in french obviously obviously and uh luckily they do uh in the book they've got the french transcript and a translation so again you can pretend you know what's in there from that um but there's loads it's absolutely huge um yeah uh, betty davis <gasps> a letter from betty davis isn't it brilliant um Marianne, just I've just got the book Ship of Dreams on Audible. Thank you for the recommendation. Yeah, the Audible one as well is um uh, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the lady who um who narrates it, but she's fab so easy. It is I tell you what, that book, I'm going back to it again. I could read that over and over again because Gareth has managed to weave in so much information, but it doesn't make it a tough read. You know, when someone when some writers have tried to stick in so much that it's hard to kind of unpick and there's too many names and dates and it just gets difficult to follow that, that, um, that doesn't happen. Oh, apparently that letter is in um, John Guy's book as well. Cool. So I will, do you know what? I'm going to, um, cause Sarah B would definitely like the recipe. So uh, I will share that later on, maybe at the end if we've got time as well. Um, and Kathy, I think you want the recipe as well. Um, enough for six. I mean, she's even annotated it at the bottom. Enough for 16 people. I just I love that. Do you know one of my favourite books that I've got of all time is a um, an old, um, I think it's a women's own cookbook. Uh, probably again from about 1960 and what and I picked it up from a charity shop and one of my favorite bits of it is that in the back the lady who owned it um had written you know there was um blank pages at the back and she'd written in her own recipes for um I think it was jam a few were jam which is probably why I've not actually done them yet because I used to be really good at cooking and then I started my own business and then I didn't, and then I just didn't have time. Mm. I actually got around to making myself. Do you notice tonight I was on time and I've got a hot cup of tea. I'm getting better. Mm. So those are my two physical books or, well, or Gareth's on Audible is also really good as well. And the other one I'm listening to at the moment. So the one I'm listening to, sorry, on Audible at the moment is called, I've written it down because it's How to Behave Badly in Renaissance Britain. Oh my goodness. It's by Ruth Goodman and she narrates it as well. And I've, um, I mean, she goes straight in. The first chapter is how to hurl insults and basically swear at people in, uh, in Renaissance Britain. So this is like, you know, this is Plantagenet Tudor sort of into Stuart period. <laughs> some of the stuff oh my goodness I don't think I could repeat it it's very very funny very funny and there's loads of it and I think she gets a lot of it because it's unaudible um you know if you've got a, a physical book you might like look where the reason um, where the sources are and, and things like that um oh Joanne I'll come back to that then Queen Queen Charlotte as in as in the Georgian era, Queen Charlotte. Come back to that. Um, uh, where was I? What was I saying? 
think <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, you look at the sources. So anyway, it, from listening to the book, it sounds like um, a lot of uh, she's picked up quite a few from court records. So these these were um, slanders, I suppose, that had ended up in um, in court records um, because some were. Uh, you know, it's really serious stuff. If you um, if you uh, accused a woman of um, the Black Queen, Joanne, I'm not actually sure who we're talking about. Sorry. Maybe if I knew who, why don't I know that? Is that is that what she's referred to as in um, a fiction book, perhaps? If you clarify that for me, maybe I, I might, I might just not know. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, I forgot what I was saying again. Anyway, never mind, never mind. Oh, the court records. Oh, yeah. So if you if you called if you um, insinuated that a lady had been unchaste, uh, then you are slandering not only her but her husband, and it's anyway. That is very funny. But I'm only on the first chapter of that, so I'll um I'll get back to you about that. But I can definitely, honestly, just for the first chapter, I could rec I could um I could recommend it. Um, I'm not sure, Joanne. I'm really intrigued now who you're talking about. <laughs> so those are my book recommendations. I know quite a few of you um got onto the ones that I uh, said about last week. So. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, if you weren't already like me, I'm going to force you all to become like me and have like a huge stack by your bed that you just hope you're going to get through one day. Um, but if you don't want to read, this is a nice segue. I've got some stuff for you to watch if you want. Seamless. Um, I did a video last week. I think it might have gone live Friday, so the day after I last I last spoke to you, um, about the real story of Rule Britannia. It's about as controversial as I've ever got, really. Um, and I'm not being controversial in it, but Rule Britannia is has over the last year become a bit controversial because it is it's the song. I'm not going to sing it for you, but it's the rousing song that we uh, usually hear at the end of the BBC proms. And there was all this talk about whether we should have it at all, then whether we should have the words. Anyway, I thought, right, fine. Um, let's go into why it was even written and for what purpose and blah, blah, blah. Because it, it was actually written as a private, um, for a musical that was, was performed privately. So it's commissioned by um, Prince Frederick, who was the eldest son of George II. And they didn't get on. Father-son, the Hanoverians were odd. The father-son relationship seemed not very good at all. Um, and one of the ways, well, what used to happen was they were, so Fre Frederick, he never, obviously, we've not had a King Frederick, so you can guess he died before his father. Um and his younger brother, George, who became George III, took the throne. But what would happen is, as heir to the throne, they'd kind of almost start setting up their, um, oh, yeah, um, set up um, a kind of rival court, a little rival sort of faction of their friends. You can kind of, you can kind of see why, you know, they've got their friends and this, these are basically the people they're going to bring with them when they get to the throne. Um, but another way of doing it was to be, you know, if you're the one up and coming, you're the one who's going to be the patron of the arts and the latest trends and commissioning something like music or poetry or theater or something like that was a great way of doing it. And Prince Frederick commissioned a, what, what we would call, um, musicals, um, Kathy, Queen Charlotte, Married to George the Third, she was of mixed race. Don't know. I, to be honest, I've not um, ever come across anything that really picks up that much on that. So, um, but I'm moving into the Hanoverians more because I'm doing the um, I'm doing the research at the moment for my monarchy series, where I'm looking at the power shifts between each monarch. 
and and all the backstories behind behind that as to you know who should have been there like Frederick obviously is is going to come into that who should have been there and who didn't get there and that kind of thing so um so maybe that'll come up in my in my research um and one of the things that Frederick commissioned was this um like, like I say like musical but I don't think they would have called it a musical <laughs> that's just me um about I think it was based on Arthur can't remember anyway the main person in or the main hero in this musical was the elder son of the king I mean it was like really obvious what he was after anyway Royal Britannia was the like the finale to this um hi Barbara what, uh, thank you for uh, joining us and um, yeah, so, the, so Royal Britannia was actually this rousing kind of finale for this musical that was performed for Prince Frederick's daughter's like third birthday. I'm pretty sure she wouldn't have been that into it uh, at Clevedon House, which is where he lived. And they've got an outdoor amphitheatre and that's where it was all um, performed. But anyway, I've got a whole video on this, so I don't know why, why am I telling you this now? But basically that the story is not there's basically another story behind it that I think is quite surprising the whole fact that it was written for a private performance of a musical that was written in order to um to uh annoy his dad basically <laughs> like it's all it's all quite I mean it's quite funny I think it's funny um Forbidden recourse that a girl at Edinburgh University has been suspended because she wrote Rule Britannia in a group chat. We have to stop being, um, I, I just, I, I, you know, I think we're allowed to be proud of our own country. It doesn't mean that you're uh, against anyone else. So, um, Tudor Tracker, <laughs> Catherine, I love Rule Britannia. Sorry, not sorry. I mean, seriously, the, the music, the whole point, really, that's my point, is that once that tune was, um, performed in public it caught on really quickly um and it's actually of an era again I could just say watch the video but I'm going to go through it um it was of an era where they recognized and we, we do now surely that music art poetry theater whatever can really um it can actually create emotions so strong that that it leads to kind of beliefs I suppose and, and patriotism in this case because so George we've got George II on the throne or um, I'm not actually sure whether he was still on the throne when it was um, performed in public I can't remember off the top of my head or whether it was George III but they were still a new dynasty so with George I that's who took over from um, Queen Anne who was the final Stuart Queen um, <laughs> Joanne wants me to sing it a little <laughs> I'll just bring in the uh, the orchestra because you know I can't do it without a, without a backing track. Um, and uh, uh, well, <laughs> I keep going off track today. Oh yes, yeah, so the idea really was because this is when we got um, "God Save the King" as well written. <laughs> it was it was written? It's around this sort of time because the idea was just um, to get people behind their new it's a new setup it was a new setup we had german uh, family on the throne um i mean george the first didn't even speak much english um i think he understood a bit he understood it i think but he couldn't speak it i think that's quite common with people who've learned languages um me and my italian which is very sketchy uh, i can definitely understand more than i can create out of my own mouth <laughs> um uh, anyway he was similar so it was all about that really um so no that's one video that you can go and see <laughs> that I've done um I've done one on the first FA Cup final which which everyone's probably going I don't think I'll watch that one but I tell you why I did that one it was 1872 I think off the top of my head and um Nothing like the football we've got now. Um, no money in it. People were, you know, people would play football. A lot of them were cricket clubs that would then play football in the winter to keep fit. Or they were attached to a workplace, again, to keep fit and, I don't know, give some camaraderie outside of the workplace. Um, 
and there was there was no difference to the Scottish and the English teams at the time. Anyway, so um, one the one the people who won Barbara loves football. Oh, Barbara, check it out then. You might like the video. Um, the the people who the, the team who won were called Wanderers, and my team when I was growing up was Wolverhampton Wanderers or Wolves as uh, as they're they're more more well known as, and never thought about the names, but Wanderers was. Um, just the team was just called Wanderers in this in the, the, the final of the first FA Cup final, uh, first FA Cup, and uh, because they just had they didn't have a fixed um, place that they played, so they were the Wanderers. Of course they were. It's so obvious now. Um, and the Scottish team, oh, I can't think where they were from off the top of my head. Um, they had to give up their 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 place because um, they couldn't afford to get to the game. How sad is that? So it's a totally different um, setup to uh, to now, where it's uh, lots of money and and they go in smart buses and whatever. Barbara, football was born in the city of Sheffield. Ah, yes, Ruth, I think it was. Um, yeah, I think it was Celtic Rangers. How do you know that? That's my sister, by the way. That's why I'm sounding incredulous. Um. So uh, I don't know the total origins of football, Barbara. Now you've got me um, intrigued. So there's another one for you. And then today has gone live um, the, the uh, I suppose it's martyring, but it's the murder of King Edward. Um, this is pre-conquest. So that's why he's not uh, Edward I or whatever, because we didn't number them before the Norman conquest. Um <laughs> And he was only about 15 or 16. His um, father was Ethel, Ethelred. Ethelred, I think. Anyway, the video is there. But yeah, he was murdered at the at the gates of Corfe Castle, um, probably on the orders of his stepmother, who wanted uh, her, her son to become king. But he was only about six or seven at the time. Jane, see, oh, we have got some football fans in here. Jane says it was Sheffield Football Club, 1857. Ah, I mean, Sheffield have got proud football roots, haven't they? Definitely, definitely. And now I know why. Um, so, yeah, so King Edward and, and Edward was martyred. Um, never, he's he's referred to as Edward the Martyr um, as opposed to Saint Edward. I mean, we do have a Saint Edward who was um, King Edward I, but uh, it was never officially um, never officially made a saint. Barbara, Sheffield Wednesday, uh, sorry, let me pull that back down, was so-called because they were cricketers who started playing football on a Wednesday. Ah, fantastic. Yeah, ha, ha. now it all makes sense. Don't you just love etymolo etymology? The history of words, the the... The background to words. We did a uh, a talk last night. I'll come on to this in a bit about place names and uh, and why they were, that where the, those names come from. I'll come back to that in a bit. Oh, and the next video I've got coming out. It's not till Sunday, but the burning of Archbishop Cranmer. So his execution. Um, he's the one who uh, he recanted his um, Protestant faith. Uh, this is in the time of Mary the first. I think five times, but they still, well, Mary still wanted to execute him. Cranmer was the one who oversaw the divorce of Mary's mother, uh, Catherine of Aragon, or the annulment of Catherine of Aragon and Henry VIII's um, marriage. So I assume uh, Mary wasn't that keen on being uh, very understanding of, of him. But anyway, he he's the one who thrust his right hand, the hand who that had signed these... Um, you know, the recantations of his uh, Protestant faith uh, into the fire first. He said that has to burn first for... Anyway, so that's out on Sunday, which is also Census Day, by the way, anyone in the UK. We've got to fill out our census, but otherwise you will be fined a £1,000. There you go. But anyway, it's really simple. Did it today. Click, 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 click. Done. Um, and before I go on to my big news then... Um, the just to let you know, if anyone has tried to visit my Teespring shop, 
it's um, the rest is history shop. Any of you who are on my newsletter have got a 10% discount. If you're not, then sign up and you get a 10% discount. Um, but they took me offline by mistake. How rude. So I went on to have a look and, uh, and I was offline. But anyway, it's back online now. I played my face and they were they just had technical issues and it had just gone offline. But anyway, so any of you who had my newsletter last week and thought, why is she uh, why is she giving me a link to something that doesn't work? That's why. It's because I didn't know it wasn't working. So anyway, on to the bigger news. This is the news that I couldn't uh, tell you about last week. And it's that we're on Clubhouse. Do any of you? Well, I don't know. I know Tudor Tracker. Catherine, she's on uh, Clubhouse with me. So it's me, um, Dr. Cat, if any of you know um, Katrina Marchant, who is reading the past on YouTube. She's got a massive channel. She's amazing. Well, me, Dr. Cat, Catherine, who's the Tudor Tracker, and Sarah Morris, who is the Tudor Travel Guide. We have come together and started um, two clubs on Clubhouse, um, a history and culture club and the Tudor History Club down there. Now, Clubhouse is um, brand new. Brand new. Uh, so some of you might not have heard about it yet. So if you have a look back, um, I've, I've put the video that we've, we've kind of tried to do a, an explanation of what we're up to. Um, it's It's live. It's just voice, though. It's a bit like being able to jump into uh, any room at a seminar that you want to and go and actually speak to the speakers. It's really, really it is actually really good. We're really excited about it. Um, we've got, um, so we've got those clubs, so History and Culture Club, Tudor History Club, and we do a live half an hour on a Monday and a Friday at five o'clock. We have um, a History Chilled Tudor Chat on a Wednesday morning at 8.30 a.m. That's based on loosely based around events that happen in Tudor history in the week and then we just let the conversation take take it where we want to and then we have a history a history after dark room um which I do with Catherine and uh and Kat and um history after dark is not for the faint-hearted yet yeah, so last night I was talking to said earlier about doing um etymology of place names well we did rude place names oh my goodness we had the biggest laugh uh because it was just we have very very rude um sounding place names here in britain um and then we you know we covered it with a veneer of professionality by talking about the etymology but it was it was a very good uh session so barbara is it an app yes it is it's an app only for unfortunately at the moment iphone and ipad um but they are they're basically it's supposed to still be in beta testing um but it's huge it's already huge so I think when it is released um to Android as well I think it's going to be really really popular because once you're on it you can um you get so much value out of it and actually I was going to say to everyone today if um so when you get on to Clubhouse it's by invite only and when you get on, you get five or so invites to invite other people. And so I've got some invites and I would like to give some invites away. Um, and what I was hoping to do is some kind of cascade. So if you're happy to, I might do this in my free group on Facebook just to keep it kind of manageable. Oh, Barbara's on Android. I re I don't think it'll be long. I don't think it'll be long. Um, I really hope not until it's on Android. Um, I think that might come in the next month or two because they know that they know that the demand is going to be there. Um, but if any of you are on iPhone or iPad and you want to give it a go, if you DM me, DM me, my direct message me, uh, uh, on Facebook would be ideal. I don't think you can. Can you DM me on YouTube? I don't think you can. Um, so DM me on Facebook and I will get you on. And then if you don't mind, then if you can offer up um, two invites in, in the group, then um, we can kind of get as many people as want to be on, on, which would be fabulous because we've covered all sorts already. Um, We've gone around and done our favourite tombs. That sounds really macabre, doesn't it? But I did, um, I was a little bit 
uh, confused earlier when we, when um, when Joanne when you said about Queen Charlotte because in my head I'd got Princess Charlotte, um, and Princess Charlotte um, uh, died. I think she was she was the daughter of George III, wasn't she? And she died in childbirth, um, and it meant that basically the 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 uh, the only legitimate line beyond the children of George III disappeared. Um, and actually that scramble to have more uh, legitimate children led to the birth of Queen Victoria. So actually without Charlotte's death, we may not have had Queen Victoria. Well, very unlikely actually that Queen Victoria would have would have been born. Um, anyway, her tomb was the one I chose because if any of you have been, it's in St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. Um, as you're in the chapel, if you're right at the back, it's on your left and it's this, incredible white marble um depiction of a of a woman lying uh and it's it's all um it's all as if they're under um oh, thank you Joanne I make history so interesting I hope so that's what I'm trying to do in my waffly way <laughs> um but it's like she's um what do you call it when when someone's underneath the sort of a, a, a not a blanket something far lighter than that um and uh, her baby has been taken up to heaven um, in the arms of an angel. And actually, she's also above the tomb, um, making her way to heaven. It's an incredibly evocative. Uh, Kathy says she, that chapel was amazing. She could have stayed for hours. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I could have stayed for hours just looking at Princess Charlotte's tomb. Um, it's incredibly moving. Anyway, so we did a whole uh, session on um, on just our favourite tombs. <laughs> Because they, that sounds macabre, but it's it's actually really interesting. We've done, like I said, the the et etymology of rude place names, which basically was a really good excuse to um, to talk about rude place names. Uh, we've done ones on the Great Fire of London, historic bling. That was a good one. We talked about um, you know the three brothers jewel, which is on. Um, um, many portraits of Elizabeth I. It's actually on her tomb as well. That uh, that jewel, and we talked about the history of that. Um, Sarah Morris was talking about history. Of that it was really good. Last week we did um, Henry VIII and why he is the way he is, or is <laughs> not is <laughs> was. Um, what changed because it was the anniversary of his. 1524 jousting accident, which I spoke about last week, um, and so then we did a discussion on that. So. Um, and then Monday we did it. Ask me anything about Anne Boleyn. So we do quite a variety of uh, of of rooms in there. So if you're on Clubhouse already, you can find me at Philippa B. Um, and if you're not, like I say, if you go to my free Facebook group, it's called British History with Philippa Lacey Brule Free Group. Nice and short and succinct there. Uh, then I'm going to start a cascade in there. So if you're willing to uh, to get on there, and then when you've got an invite, hand one or two, ideally to the next person who's interested, then we could get quite a few of us on there. Um, and it, it, it's it's great because you get a chance to um, to talk to us live. You get a chance to ask questions. You can come in and just listen as well. There's no need to uh, to speak. You don't, you don't have to feel on the spot or anything like that, that, not at all. But tomorrow we're doing our launch party. Now get this for History Geek. It's <laughs> we've, we've called it Let's Party Like It's 1520. Yeah, you're impressed, aren't you? Do you know what 1520 was? Anybody want to guess? Or you might know. There's a bit of a delay on the uh, captions, by the way. The, the, uh, uh, Barbara, will they? Oh, so Barbara's asking, will the, they still be available once it's on Android? So the other thing about Clubhouse that you've prompted me, thank you very much, is it's totally live. It's not recorded. Um, it is very different to, to something like um, this or Facebook or Instagram. It's literally you're there or you're not there. So it's like it's like a live event um, online. So what we what we'll probably do is popular topics we might repeat. Uh, and what you can do, there's no sort of in-app messaging or places to leave comments or anything like that at the moment. 
Um, and I, I think maybe they'll keep it simple and you won't have. Um, but what you do do is link your Instagram and therefore people can direct message you through Instagram to suggest topics and things like that. So that's one of the features, actually, is that it's sort of a now or never thing, um, which uh, is just a new new way of doing things. Um, Marion says, I agree, the team for Princess Charlotte is so moving. Looking forward to the app on Android. Yes, so there's quite a few Android users um, who are really keen to get on Clubhouse, and, and, and rightfully so. I think you're going to love it when you're on there. Um, and like I say, we're, we're doing so many things on there. So we'll have our launch party. So no, nobody's guessed. Fifteen twenty filled a cloth of gold. Um, but, you know, but without the field cloth of gold or wine fountains. But we'll 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 manage. We'll manage to do it. We'll manage to do it. If you haven't already checked out the um, launch video or the bloopers video as well, <laughs> I can't resist. I actually edited the uh, the launch video, and there was so many well I was laughing anyway so I put all the bits that made me laugh together um and put that out as well so check that out on uh, on my YouTube um we're also going to do femme fatales of the renaissance uh, of renaissance Europe we're going to do cads villains and ne'er-do-wells of Tudor England and some um also we do a lot to, we do do quite a bit of travel stuff so well travel as in places that we'd think you know you should go so for instance when we did the tombs it was um you know, these are teams that we'd suggest you go and look at because they're they're interesting. Um, and uh, uh, Kathy, 1520, Wolsey gave Hampton Court to Henry VIII. Mm. Yeah, gave. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, so anyway, we, and we're also going to do less well-known history and heritage spots. Again, we yeah, very good, Barbara. See, I don't know what the lag is. I think the lag on the comments is quite um, is quite a bit. So sorry about that. If you think I've jumped in before you've said it, um, the um, because uh, I've spoken the last few weeks about uh, on Instagram as well. I've been sharing places that aren't aren't. I mean, some of them were bigger places that you'll have, that you'll definitely heard about, but sharing some of the less well known places because I do feel that when we're all open. Um, open up to travel again the bigger places everyone knows about them and they'll get well visited I'm sure um, but there are also some fabulous smaller heritage spots that are probably in more need of patronage so I've shared quite a lot and will continue to do so on my Instagram but yeah we're going to have a room about that um, Joanne was asking um, sorry let me pull that back how did how did I start doing this the history talks and everything oh well how long have you got Joanne um I don't think that's what you were talking about though and yeah gave yeah yeah when Wolsey gave uh Hampton Court York Place um and anything else he thought might save himself um interesting York Place York Place is 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 the palace you might know that turned into Whitehall Palace which is now the area that we call Whitehall in London, um, where Horse Guards Parade and everything is, which so there's there's, there's basically nothing left of the Tudor Whitehall Palace, um, and very little left of any of it. Uh, Banqueting House being the main main bit that's left of it, but um, York Place because Wolsey was the Archbishop of York, it was actually not his personal possession. It was um, the Diocese of York's possession. It was, it was a possession of the church, effectively. Um, it wasn't for Henry to take, but um, yeah, didn't stop him, did it? Um, so how did I get into doing this? Oh, well, um, when, okay, so the root, the real root of it was when I was at university, I was studying psychology um with kind of business behavior um so how people how people uh, behave in groups and teams and things like that and I wanted a female role model and I just felt that at the time there wasn't anybody in public life who I really felt um that, that was that for me so I started looking around and I came across 
not that I'd never heard of her before, of course, but Elizabeth I. And I started reading about Elizabeth. Um, and she um, she's not one thing or another. She's a total mix. Um, in other words, she's more real than a lot of, um, of, of everyone's real in history. It's the way they've been portrayed since. But we know Elizabeth cried. We know she had a temper tantrum every so often. We know she, um, but she, we know she she had her her views and she was strong with them. Anyway, so I started reading about her. I wanted to. I felt a, a strong need to go to places she had been um, to just I suppose soak up the atmosphere walk in her footsteps all of that kind of thing that I know a lot of you are um, into as well and that carried on it wasn't just Elizabeth then to understand her story I needed to read about her father and mother then I needed to read about the whole Tudor period then I needed to go back into the Plantagenet period anyway the the fuse was lit for uh for a lifetime really of uh of, of learning about history and learning um Particularly, I like learning how threads run through time so we don't just compartmentalise either into people or time periods, but we, we we look at how things ebb and flow and interact and impact on, on the next thing. Um, and I would go visiting places, spend ridiculous amounts of time, um, just, I don't know, standing there, sitting there, reading, talking to room guides, brilliant. If you're ever places, just, just tap them for information. Um, and people would whiz through and uh, and I'd be like, oh, my God, do they not know that whatever X, Y or Z happened in this room? And I wanted to be able to share that. And so I decided to set up British History Tours. Um, and then from that, I realised I've sort of got quite a bit of knowledge or stuff <laughs> that I wanted to share that people find interesting to listen to. And so I started doing Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and now on Clubhouse as well. So there you go, Joanne. Does that answer your question, how I got into this? I got into it and uh, and it just keeps uh, um, kind of changing, changing up um, and uh, and just thoroughly enjoyable. It means I can connect with people like you um, who who want to learn about about history and British history, and and love hearing um, different views about things that we think are familiar. And that's that's something I like to do. Hi Jane. Hi Sammy. That's something I like to do on quite a regular basis. If I find something that's a bit of a um, oh, thank you, Joanne. Uh, hi Dawn. If I um, find a way of, uh, or I find out something. For instance, the Titanic talk that I was telling you about that I did with Gareth that's gone live today. Um, Barbara, history is the gift that keeps on giving. But it is, I mean, you know, it's complicated because humans are complicated. We are so complicated and we can go backwards and, um, and it just piles on. It piles on and piles on and piles on. And um, yeah, so to hit anything that we feel is familiar, but I find something else out new or new to me. And I think well, if it's new to me, it's probably going to be new to a lot of people. And then I share it um, as well as obviously visiting places. And the other day I've done a reel. Don't know if any of you are on Instagram, I've been messing around with reels, which are, um, don't worry, Dawn, you can go back and enjoy the whole hour or whatever I've been talking for um go and grab yourself a cup of tea and then you can um you can re-watch um uh yeah I put on a reel on Instagram um so they're only 30 seconds long of old Gorhambury Hall Gorhambury Hall I'm, I'm actually I've never said it out loud so I'm not quite sure how it's, how it's said and it was this big um beautiful mansion built by Sir Nicholas Bacon. So you had Francis Bacon, who's his son, Nicholas Bacon, who was at one time Lord Privy Seal in Elizabeth I's court. Anyway, he built this beautiful big house. And you, I had gone to St Albans, I'll get to the point, you, you'll see where I'm going in a minute, to see the Roman ruins, which is another big interest of mine, Roman Britain. And and I, I can't remember why I was on Google Maps, but I noticed that it said Old Gornbury Hall. And I was like, well, where is it? There's a gate there. I can't drive anywhere else. So where is it? Well, 
people. If you go to St Albans and you park um, and walk up to the amphitheatre for the, the Roman ruins, if you carry on up the road and it's two miles, so it's a fair, it is a fair walk, you will find the ruins of old Gorenbury House. And if you look at my reel on Instagram, I show you, so the, the English Heritage manage the site now, manage or not, but anyway, they have there a board, an information board, which is, you know, when they do the beautiful illustrations of what it wants to look like, which is great for someone like me who, I like to think I've got an imagination, but it's not actually that good. And and they've mocked up what it would have looked like. So I've panned from that to show you the the, the biggest um, surviving part, which is sort of the entrance mm, entrance doorway. But it, but it's two stories. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Um, so so that's the other thing I like to share is places to go and see, especially if they're a little off the beaten track. Um, especially if they just, Kate, sorry, I'm late. I'm going to mark you down, Kate. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so sharing places to go that you may not know about, but are a bit more magical, you know, when you get there because because you didn't know about them. There's, um, don't worry, Kate, you can, I, I was just saying to Dawn, you can scrub back and watch the, watch the lot. Um, because we've covered quite a bit today. Um, so the other place, oh, there's another place. I will let you all go in a minute because I have actually nearly been talking for an hour. I've got to take my husband to go and get his car. Oh. As well, I must remember to do that. Um, oh, I need to find out the video again. I'll share it if I can find it. And it is a little church in, I think it falls under Shropshire. And it looks like it's in the middle of a field. Well, it is in the middle of a field now. Obviously, it was once a little hamlet church. And if it's still as it was when I last went there, and I've been there a couple of times, the key is in the door. This big iron key. Well, I didn't take it out, so I shouldn't know. But, um, well, the end's about that big, so I'm assuming it's. Um, but this iron key, and you unlock the door and let yourself into this little church. Um, and the pews are still there. Um, and, you know, it's disused. Um, and you just lock it up and you leave when you've gone, when, when you're finished. So sharing those kind of things, um, I have a big passion for, um, as well as the, the as well as the uh, the stories about some of the places that are more um more well known. Joanne, my history is that my family was one of the last to be able to climb down the outside of the pyramids legally in 1970. I used to be able to climb up and down them. I've got a story about a pyramid tomb. Any of you seen any? Um, oh, Barbara, you'd love that little church. We'll go one day. We'll do, we'll do a day out and we'll go and have a look at it. Well, hopefully it's still as it was and you can still get in um, like that because it was such a quaint way of doing it. Um, uh pyramids yes does anyone i don't know before, before i let you go the one you know i said we did the tombs um talked about our favorite tombs and and the one i chose was princess charlotte the other one that i didn't get around to sharing on clubhouse was um a tomb in oh i can't remember the name of the church but anyway in liverpool uh in fact there's two pyramid tombs i know about one's in rome Love Rome, and uh, and the others in Liverpool, <laughs> and and the one in Liverpool it looks so odd because it's just a pyramid in uh, in in this church. So normal, normal, uh, you know, traditional type of uh, headstones, and then there's this pyramid. And uh, the legend goes that the guy inside it, who again, sorry, this is off the top of my head, so I can't remember all the details, is in there with a with um kind of a, a card table with uh, a winning hand because he uh there was, there was something about him losing a game or something and the, and the if he got buried underneath if he got buried the, the devil would take his soul so the idea was that if he wasn't buried if he was above ground the devil couldn't take his soul um but that's actually just legend and he is underneath there with two of his wives i think so anyway that's reminded me joanne you're talking about pyramids <laughs> Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. Um, 
I hope my microphone hasn't been too scratchy. I've just realized it was underneath my shirt. Uh, but yes, thank you for joining me. We'll do this again next week. Um, just Kate, we've got a lot of mini shrines churches here in Germany. The one close to my it, I'm really interested to go to Europe actually again when we can. Um, and and the churches especially I find um, really interesting because they're obviously they were were or are part of people's sort of daily week yeah you know, they're a big part of people's lives so they're they're really important they can teach us a lot um thank you for joining me everyone thank you joanne um anyone who's come in a little bit late please do scrub back to the beginning and 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 watch to your heart's content um because we've covered a lot um kathy says that was awesome thank you and i'm looking for the titanic book yes yeah, so just as a reminder here it is, Russ Russell, The Ship of Dreams. Um, uh, it's a fabulous book. Um, yes, and, and he's such a lovely guy. But even if you're not in my Patreon club, I mean, please join if you like. <laughs> I would love to see you there. But even if you're not, I've put four minutes of his interview as a um, as another video on um, YouTube. And I don't know if I've put it on Facebook. By the way, it's on YouTube, if, if not anyway. Um, Barbara, you should take us all to Rome. Do you know, I've been to Rome so much that I reckon I could do a tour of Rome. Not that I would want to take it away from the amazing uh, tour guys that are there. Um, Sarah, you bring history to life. Thank you so much. That's what I'm hoping to do for everybody. So thank you. And introduce, you know, bits and bit stories from, from history where we can, um, uh, well, either just because they're interesting, let's, you know, we don't have to go too deep into things. Let's let's just do entertainment sometimes. Um, but also they're interesting and they um especially if they uh look at something in a slightly different way and um challenge what we thought we knew. I do like doing that. I think that's a I think that keeps our brains um healthy, don't you? When we when we have to challenge our own uh what we think we knew. Uh so anyway, um my accent. Joanne likes my accent. Oh my goodness. Um, my accent, my, my accent. So I come from a place called, um, colloquially called the black country. Uh, so I come, I was born and brought up in a place called Stourbridge. There's a Sturbridge, Massachusetts, by the way, in, uh, which is twinned with Stourbridge. Um, but yeah. Uh, and, um, so my accent, ah, oh, ciao, Monica. Um, my accent is, slightly less um strong than it was before I went to university it was kind of kicked out of me <laughs> uh, but occasionally you will hear me go into full-on black country mode with some of my words so <laughs> Monica I'm going to get you to teach me to learn Italian because I'm terrible terrible student and I love Italy so much that I really really don't have any excuses uh, can I say howdy y'all <laughs> or do you want me to say howdy y'all <laughs> if I do it in my accent oh fabulous thank you so much everyone I've had so much fun um if you want to come and join me on Clubhouse and join me um I'm there like I say with Dr Kat who's uh, from Reading the Past on YouTube um and uh Catherine who's the Tudor Tracker and Sarah who is the Tudor Travel Guide uh we're all on Clubhouse if you want to come and join unfortunately at the moment you do have to have an iPhone or an iPad hopefully that will change very soon but if you come to my free group on Facebook um British History with Philippa Lacey Brule free group I know short and snappy um then I'm going to start a cascade in there of uh, people who want to come in because it's by invite only at the moment but uh other than somebody pinging you an invite that's yeah, you know, that's the only barrier to it to getting in so we are almost at the 60 minute mark so thank you so much for joining me um and I hope to see you all next week at the same time and uh, have a fabulous weekend have a fabulous week but you know keep in contact with me over um facebook youtube and instagram in the meantime and yeah i will see you all very soon bye bye everyone